Hi team, this is Chris Abraham from GoMath. Welcome to the 2015 Teacher Workshop Series. We'll be working with Oberlin College students this winter to prepare some amazing videos in math, science, English, and history to help you pass your teacher certification exams. Use these videos to help you in your studies and your preparation. And if you need some extra help, attend a workshop. We're holding workshops throughout the United States, in Massachusetts, in California, in New York, in Florida. I'm sure you'll find them very helpful. Hi team, this is Chris Abraham from GoMath. Welcome to the 2015 Teacher Workshop Series. Today we're going to be working on number 44 on the elementary math MTEL, the 53 math MTEL. This is a nice intermediate math problem and it involves time to distance graphs. They give you a graph and they ask you to match up this graph with, a, uh, with the correct scenario. Now you notice uh, each one of these scenarios there's a lot of writing. And so sometimes this can be overwhelming to read over all of these. So what I'm going to ask you to do right now is I just want you to identify the central image in the scenario. What's the major image? And, and maybe take a moment, take 30 seconds and scan each one of these over. Pause the video, scan over what's the central image. Unpause the video. I'm hoping you pulled out this. We're talking about a bicyclist. Your central image, you should be thinking about someone riding a bicycle, you know, with this idea of a bicyclist, what do these changes in the slope of this graph mean? Let's go to Conti. Take it away, Conti. Help us out here. Hi, Chris. We're going to talk about reading time distance graphs. You may come across a problem that asks you to match a graph to a scenario or story that explains how it looks. The, the key is to note points and slopes and changes in the graph. Let's look at this one. We know the bicyclist is making a trip that starts and begins at home because the end and the beginning of the graph both are at points with a y value of zero. When the cyclist starts out, they are going at a steady pace. The first change comes at this point. Then the slope decreases. They cover the same amount of, of distance, one mile, but in twice as much time, 20 minutes. For some reason, there's an obstacle in their, in their trip that is making them go slower. This part of the graph shows that they are stopped for 30 minutes. There is still a distance of 2 miles from home. Then they start up again and go the same pace of 1 mile every 10 minutes until they are 5 miles away from home. Then their distance from home decreases steadily until they return. But along the way, they are moving faster. They are moving one and a half miles for every 10 minutes. That's it for today on reading time distance graphs. Back to you, Chris. Okay, great. So now we have an idea. These points on the graph, this means that the, the bicyclist is traveling pretty fast. And here the slope decreases so they slow down. And here it's not moving at all. This, this pause here is like they stop, or we, sometimes I like to say they have lunch maybe during that time. They go fast again. And then this last downward arrow on the graph, this represents going fast but um, going home. All right, so we're looking for fast, slow, stop, fast, home. Everyone reread C for a moment. It says, a bicyclist leaves home and travels one mile on a paved road. Paved road, that's code for going fast during the first 10 minutes and an additional mile on a rough dirt road during the next 20 minutes. Rough dirt road, that's code for going slow. The cyclist then stops for 30 minutes. Stops is like they have lunch, right? That's them stopping, them eating lunch before continuing three miles down a paved road to a river. So they're going down a paved road, they're going fast again, because paved road is easy, easy biking. And then it says, finally the cyclist returns home on a direct paved road, completing their, two, uh, their trip in two hours. Well again, they're, they're going fast, but this means returning home, they're going to be going at a negative slope. So we're going to be looking for a steep 
negative slope. When we go back to our original one here, which, which help, Conti helped us think about, you know, they went fast, then slowed down, then stopped, then went fast again, and then returned home at that steep slope. So we have this. If you can do this type of analysis even before reading and do this stuff very quickly, it's going to save you a huge amount of time. Just identify the central image and be like, okay, this, the steep slope means they're going fast, this means they're going slow, this means they're stopped, they're going fast and they're going home. Okay, I'm looking for a scenario where they're going fast, slow, stop, fast, fast, home. You do that stuff very quickly, it will help you get to the answer faster. Okay team, this is Chris Abraham from GoMath. Hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you, Conti, for your help on this. Everyone have a great day. Take care.